Hello friends, once again welcome you to my channel. So in our last video we have seen multiple bus CPU organization. We have understood the connections between various components and the bus and how to transfer content from one register to another. Simple basic things we have discussed and in this video we will see whenever we will execute one instruction then starting from fetching the instruction, decoding, getting operand and then executing the instruction all the steps we will see using multiple bus CPU organization. So here is your example I am just getting it. The example we have taken is the basic one the very basic one example we have taken add R4, R5, R6. Meaning of this instruction is we are adding the contents of register R4 with the contents of register R5 and putting the result in R6. So in this diagram where is R4, R5, R6? They belongs to this register file only. Right? And see to get the content of R4 and R5 we need not have to go to memory. Always remember registers are part of the CPU. R6 is also part of CPU so result will be stored in R6. For that also you need not have to go to memory. The point is the instruction itself is initially loaded in the is stored in the memory. From the memory we need to get the instruction inside our IR. Then only it will be decoded and then the next set of actions will be decided. So our first job is to fetch the instruction. So what are our steps? Who can point to instruction? We know that that is PC. So PC is content we need to give to whom? MAR because to memory who can point? Here see actually your memory module is connected. So to memory MAR can only give the address. But where is my address right now? In the PC. So from PC somehow I need to get the address in MAR. MAR. Then only it will be connected to the memory module. So what we will do? First we will write PC out. Here we will not write AB. Why? Because we know PC can do out only to bus B. So simply write PC out. The first signal. After giving this signal, next what I have to do? I need to get the content of bus B into bus C. Then only MAR will be having that address. So what I will do? Last video only I have mentioned. If at all we need to get the content of bus B onto bus C. Then simply we will write R equal to B. What is B? One of the input of the ALU. Whatever is there on this bus that is also available on the B input of the ALU. Here we need not have to do what? Any in or out because these are nothing but what? These are the names of input. They are not registers. So whatever is there on bus B is connected to the B input of the ALU. Fine. Now the, if I write R equal to B that means this content will be there. That means it is there on bus C. R equal to B we have done. That means it is there on bus C. Then we can do MAR in. So see in the beginning of the clock cycle content will be given to bus B. From there it is transferred to bus C. And by the end of the clock cycle. But in the same clock cycle. By the end of the clock cycle the value is loaded into MAR. MAR in. If it is connected to M means if it is loaded in MAR. That means it is connected to your memory and processors address bus whatever address bus is there between them the address is loaded there done then next is after giving the address our next job is to provide the read signal so read so we have given the address then we have told the memory to give us that is read so it will take some time in the meantime what we used to do we used to increment the pc right but here to increment the content of pc we need not have to go to ALU because here we have another dedicated hardware called as in incrementer. So whatever is there in PC is also available in the incrementer. But it will not do anything. We need to enable, we need to give the signal to the incrementer that do this. So we will give the signal increment PC. That means this hardware is enabled. So whatever content coming on his input that will be incremented and the result will be put back into PC. That too in the same clock cycle. Please understand this will not create any harm. Why? Because 
the new value will enter into pc via different path not via the bus where we have placed and the another point is uh, that by the end of the clock cycle only this value will come into pc and the original value of pc is already given on bus b in the beginning of the clock cycle and that we have transferred to c and given to mar so this will not create any problem please understand increment pc we are doing in the same step where we have done pc out out will be done in the beginning of the clock cycle incremented value will enter into pc by the end of the clock cycle and whatever we have out that is given to is proper register that is mar so this part is fine here we need to understand this part and see always the connection is there but this connection will not create any harm it will start acting only when it will get a signal right so increment pc we have done so in this step we can do this much only uh, the next one is so see we have incremented the pc we have told the memory to give us the instruction so next we have to wait for that the signal is wmfc in step 2 only we will do wmfc not here here it is not possible so wmfc will be in the next uh, step only right because two signals cannot be uh, given on the same path at the same time so read signal in one cycle uh, wmfc in the next one this far is fine after your wmfc is over that means your waiting is over where at all the instruction will come from memory in mdr because we know the connection is here only so the instruction will be loaded in mdr now from mdr where i need to redirect it into your ir then only decoding will be done right but see here in the diagram mdr can place his content on bus a and b right and new value enters from bus c and into ir value will come via bus c only so what we will do we will do mdr out b right mdr out b then that means data is placed on bus b then what i will write r equal to b this is how we are placing this content on bus c r equal to b right and then we can write ir in once we have written ir in the instruction is decoded so we understood that we need to perform a addition operation all the operands are there in registers only so this far is understood see instead of your mdr out b you can do mdr out a also that time something more also you need to do if you do mdr out a then the data will be placed on bus a now to place the content of bus a in the input of your alu here you need to give the select line select a you need to write select a you need to write then only the content will be placed because it is connected to the multiplexer then multiplexer need to select the content of a then only it will go to the a input of the alu then only you can write r equal to a then only it will be here and then it will be given to ir right the point is this also correct and the other one i have told that is also fine right so this is how we have done another one is now we'll start executing this part is called as instruction fetch and uh, decoding then the next part comes is your execution so what you have to execute r4 r5 you need to bring to alu and then you need to add so we'll do r4 out a that means from this register file r4 out a r4 content is here then we'll place the r5 content on the bus see this is happening all in the same clock cycle right so both the inputs are there on bus b and bus a now this content we need to place on bus uh, a input of the alu so what i have to do select a this i have to write select a right here see why register is not required why because there are two buses as well as you do not require z uh, register also because directly you can place the result on the bus c so y and z register need is uh, removed eliminated right r4 out a r5 out b then select a after that inputs are available we have given the signal add so operation is done result will be placed on once operation is done means the result is also there on bus c so from there you just give the result to whom r6 so what i will write r6 in this much is only required to perform and then our instruction is over execution part is done and 
so see the beauty of multibus here you need to observe that see to do this uh, addition operation we require only one step only whereas in single bus we would require three steps one to put the one content in y register next to put the another content and do the addition then in the next clock cycle z register content will be given to r6 but here what we have done in a single clock cycle we have done everything another thing increment pc also we are not doing via alu it is done in the same step only and there is nothing wrong in that because in the beginning of the clock cycle the previous content of pc has gone to bus b and via bus b it has gone to mar so we are doing the correct operation only so this much is there in this video hope you have understood the control steps they are kind of similar to our single bus but some at some places differences are there and what we have observed is that here we require lesser number of steps this as a whole is called as control sequence one one line is called as control step right so here we require some lesser number of steps to perform a particular instruction so that is the advantage part but what is the disadvantage part we have more number of hardware more number of buses so we are paying more that means cost will be more so this much is there in this video and if you are getting from my explanations then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you